السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه Dear brothers and sisters, the Iqamah for Salatul Fajr starting tomorrow morning, the first of Shawwal, insha'Allah, will be at 6.15, insha'Allah ta'ala, instead of 6.20. And the Iqamah for Salatul Isha tomorrow as well will be at 8.45, insha'Allah ta'ala. It says 8.45, my, my phone is giving me the wrong information. The app is acting up. 6, 6 a.m. correction insha'Allah tomorrow, 6 a.m. is the time insha'Allah ta'ala of iqamah for Salatul Fajr tomorrow morning. That being said, when we conclude things, it is a tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam to seek forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam when he would conclude a gathering he would say subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk that would be the conclusion that would be the conclusion of a gathering Allah Azza wa Jal revealed towards the end of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا So glorify your Lord in gratitude and seek his forgiveness. He is often accepting of people's repentance. So it is important whenever we conclude something to have the tradition of Rasulullah of istighfar. After we finish salah, we say astaghfirullah. Right? After we finish a gathering, you say astaghfirullah. After we finish, inshallah, uh, Ramadan, we should spend more time in istighfar. More time in istighfar, asking him to forgive us. Most of us, if not all of us, did not have a perfect fasting. We did not behave zero mistakes. So it is important for us to ask Allah to forgive our mistakes, to ask Allah to forgive our shortcomings, and increase that. Don't let it be the norm. Make it higher than the norm. Increase it than, more than the norm. Additionally, some very brief sunan of Eid. This particular Eid al-Fitr, the takbirat begin from time of Maghrib tonight, insha'Allah, and you continue to do individual Takbirat, anytime, anywhere you go from Maghrib till the uh, prayer of Eid. There is Takbirat Muqayyada, meaning post prayer collective Takbirat. We do that after Salatul Maghrib tonight, insha'Allah, after Salatul Isha tonight, insha'Allah, and after Salatul Fajr tomorrow morning, insha'Allah. And then we don't do any more after Dhuhr or Asr anymore. This, this Eid, it's only that many. And then we can do it together in the masjid when we come for Salatul Eid, any of the three salawat, and until the Imam stands up to pray the two rak'ahs of Salatul Eid, inshallah. It is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam to listen to the khutbah. Imagine if Rasulullah sallallahu is giving the khutbah. Would it be respectful to leave? Unless you have an emergency and a need, then if we don't have a particular need, then we should plan to be here for the, for the sunnah of the khutbah of Rasulullah Someone has a job that they must go to or they have a, an, an elderly parent they have to take care of or whatever necessary need, or you know, then they sh that's fine. But that should be the exception, not the default. Some of the uh, reminders that we need, we should not be playing with our phones when a khutbah is taking place. Sunnah khutbah or Jumu'ah khutbah. We should not be talking not on the phone and not to someone else. We should not be, I saw a couple of gentlemen exchanging business cards to buy real estate while it's Jumu'ah. It's not okay. You know, you should not do that. You do your business after 
the salah has concluded, including the khutbah, inshallah ta'ala. And also, we should break our pattern of fasting. Right now, all of us are after Fajr, right? Right? Eid prayer begins from the time about 15 to 20 minutes after sunrise. And by the way, duha prayer, or shuruq as we refer to it, prayer, is not at the time of sunrise. It's minimally 15 minutes after sunrise. Minimally 15 minutes after sunrise. That's the same time of Salatul Eid beginning time. And that's the same time of the Jumu'ah prayer beginning time according to the Hanbali Madhab. Okay? So it is important for us to understand that it, it is not the time of sunrise. It's minimally 15 minutes we should wait. And then we can pray. And that is based on the, the sun should be about... Uh, a palm tree's height one palm tree or two palm trees roughly speaking that's when we can pray not before that and that's with, with regards translating that into our terminology that we can understand or apply it's minutes 15 minutes after sunrise so the app and all the other programs they tell you sunrise is at this time you have to wait 15 minutes after that okay right now all of us are fasting and if we waited till 15 minutes after sunrise, we can pray Eid if it was Eid today, right? We should not do this pattern tomorrow. After Fajr, and before you pray Eid, whichever prayer you choose to come to, it is important for us, not mandatory, but it is important to break the pattern of fasting. Why? What difference does it make? It is the absolute obedience of Allah. That's why we stop eating, and that's why we eat. Do we understand? It's not because food is good or bad. Allah is our master. And we're getting hands-on training to submit to Allah Azza wa Jal entirely. When Allah says, no food and no drink and no intimate relations, what do we do? We say, oh, we listen and we obey. Maghrib, you must break. We say, we listen and we obey. Fajr, you must stop. We, we listen, we listen, and we obey. Eid, break your fast. We listen, we obey. It's prohibited to fast on Eid. Haram. Same, one, same act you do. You get Ajr. If you do it on Eid day, you get Wizr. Why do we do these things? Absolute submission and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, try to break your fast with anything. Could be a date could be water, whatever you like, coffee, many of us missed coffee, mashallah, so it'll be a nice cup of whatever it is that you want to have, inshallah ta'ala, before you pray Salatul Eid. Engage in the takbirat, engage in the takbirat. This is not the imam that should only be doing it. All of us should have this place vibrating, mashallah, shaking in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use the vocal cords to praise Allah. Let it have shahada and testify on our behalf Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Let it, that these walls testify on our behalf Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Not just the carpet that we sat on. Okay, so we need to engage in the takbirat. Allah says, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ In the ayat of fasting, so we glorify Allah in takbir for Him guiding us. Because all of us and any of us could have been misguided. We could have been not Muslim. We could have been a Muslim who's lost, who didn't come to the masjid a single time. We could have been a Muslim who does, didn't fast. Right? Allah Azza wa Jal gave us this hidayah. It's not because we're smart or we're, we're pious. We are nothing. Allah is the one that provides the hidayah. Inna alayna lalhuda. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يُدْخِلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ He's the one that chooses to guide. And therefore, we owe it to him to be grateful. So we say, Alhamdulillah, we say, Allahu Akbar, takbirat. And the takbirat al-Eid, all of it has takbir and tahleel and tahmeed, right? Say, Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar I don't want to do it so it's not يعني, doing it the day before so it's not bid'ah <laughs> Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar Wa lillahi alhamd Allahu Akbar kabira Wa alhamdulillahi kathira Are you hearing alhamdulillah and Allahu Akbar? Wa subhanallahi Bukratan wa asila La ilaha illallah 
وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا سبحان الله هاو ذا عيد تكبيرات كوينسايد وذ ذا كونكلوجن اوف ا بليسد سيزون تكبير تسبيح فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر اول ثري اوف ذم ان سوره النصر سبح بحمد ربك واستغفر all three actions are commanded as Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is commanded to do and we finish Ramadan and we say وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلة الحمد لله كثيرة الله أكبر كبيرة سبحان الله and so brothers and sisters try to get some rest uh, prepare yourself throughout the day so you're not rushing at night or in the morning and you're stressing each other as family and you no try you have a full day do that and lastly yani try to take some time out to visit your family or call them family in overseas family here someone you can visit within proximity make plans to visit them family that is away from you know, overseas in a different country or something call them facetime them do the video conferencing do that and if there's a family member you really are not on good terms with just send a text message. Click, خلاص. You don't have to deal with any يعني, back and forth if you're really at, at odds. And buy some, give money and gifts to each other. You're, you know, mashallah, there's traditions in the Muslim countries most of us know, right? You go, especially يعني, the sisters, go to the sisters and the, if the females in the family, masakeen, some of them. يعني, they, many of our sisters, they're so dignified, but Yani, that's the joy you bring when you, they, they just see their brother, their uncle, their father. They look up to you and you come to them, mashallah, like the man you should be and give them a nice idea. You know, this is how we should, should be. Yani, you're not just a, a man, 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 and then when it comes to Eid, I'm a, <laughs> I, I show up empty-handed. No. Be, be generous. Be generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ Any wealth you spend should be spent on, on your parents and your relatives. SubhanAllah, it begins with that. And it goes out further to, to the poor and the needy and so forth. So try to be generous. And I will say, we live in a society that celebrates many other celebrations. Okay? We know our Christian neighbors have Christmas, right? We all are aware of that. We go around to the malls, the lights everywhere, right? Music, the festival, the, 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 the special songs for that season. You have gift wrapping, right? Bombardment and mashallah, the uh, uh, the capitalism, so much marketing to buy this, buy that, buy this, right? And people are making all of these gift changing and giving and so forth. We live in that society. Our children are exposed to some of that. We have to beat that celebration, meaning we have to exceed the festivities of our counterparts in order to instill in our children the celebration of the sha'ira in the sha'ira of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our ayad, our holidays. You cannot be yani, unwise to think your child has to know and love Eid just because it's Eid doesn't work. You have to make the environment so festive, so memorable, so generous, so this. Rasulullah through his prophetic hikmah, he said the days of Eid, this Eid by the way is just one day. The, day, the, the Eid al-Adha is four days. The day of Eid plus three more. He said those days of Eid, similar to this one day Eid, he says, أَيَّامُ أَكْلٍ وَشُرْبٍ وَذِكْنِ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ They are days of eating and drinking and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did he say eating and drinking? It wasn't even fasting. This is Eid al-Adha. This is to show festivities. This is in time where food was scarce. 
and this is how you celebrate and bring joy. So we should similarly bring joy to our families through food and not limited to food. Like I said, I gave you examples, gift wrapping and gift exchanging, and mashallah, some people wait the whole year. Wait, what, what is this person like? What is this person like? They shop, they find the thing, and they get it, and they wrap it, and they hide it, and they give it, right? We know all of these things that are happening. So we should actually exceed that and always instill our holidays, our traditions with those yani, uh, love, loving memories then inshallah our children will always look up to Eid and will we'll have this Eid instilled in them and our sha'air ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ those who give greatness to the sha'air uh, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the traditions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded or, or, or instilled for us, this is from the piety of the hearts. This is from the piety of the hearts. So let us inshallah ta'ala try to inshallah yani, practice as much of this as possible and, uh, and uh, do what you need to do today do, throughout the day and do a lots of istighfar. Bring joy to your family. Please don't stress your family. Please it is not about appearances. It's about bringing joy and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be generous with your family. Be generous with you. This is the time you need to be generous. And make sure you get, you've paid your zakatul fitr. So Allah forgives our mistakes. And um, people that uh, need the help would receive it inshallah ta'ala. And reach out to family members and visit them if you can. And say salam to those you know and those you don't know. When it's Eid, everybody should be here and everybody should come together and everyone should greet each other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a most blessed season for Muslims all over the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a relief and eradication of all of their stresses. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give victory to our Palestinian brothers in Palestine and in Gaza and give them liberty and prosperity and make this the final Eid that they are occupied. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give freedom for all those who are suffering from oppression. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us always see truth as truth and help us follow it. And see falsehood as falsehood and help us avoid it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide us with the best of this world and the best of the hereafter. And pardon all of us from the punishment of the hellfire. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our many shortcomings, conceal our faults, accept our humble deeds. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about Ramadan many many more seasons and many more years while we are alive healthy prosperous and devo devoted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala submitting to him and he is pleased with us wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa habibina wa shafi'ina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in jazakumullahu khayra wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh